Hi everybody, this is Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics, and in my video on the science behind room decay time, um, I, I, oh, I can't even read it, I'm sorry, Simpson Bergman, I think is what it says, um, 2185, wrote, he gave $20 donation, so thank you very much, that's really appreciated, um, and he said, thanks for all your videos, I'd be interested in time and phase alignment of speakers and subwoofers using REW, some subwoofers have continuous phase dials, and Mini DSP also has continuous phase dial, but alignment tool in REW doesn't seem to have continuous phase, just delay. Um, so this is where things get a little bit confusing. Phase and delay are intrinsic, intrinsically connected, and you can use specialized filters to change the phase without changing the delay, but in typical IR filters, changing phase is changing delay. Um, here's the thing, you do want the phase alignment to be good, but you need the time alignment to be good too. And that's where the delay notion comes in. So what you want to do when you're trying to optimize the integration of the subwoofers and the mains is you start with A number one, time aligning those. Because if they are perfectly time aligned, they are perfectly phase aligned. But here's the problem you run into. Because the system isn't perfectly minimum phase at this particular area, it's usually very close but there often are some non-minimum phase behaviors happening around here, caused by room modes, for instance. And because, in addition to that problem, perfectly time-aligning subwoofers with mains is extremely difficult to achieve. Like, knowing what that number is is very difficult to achieve, including the fact that there's typically rising group delay happening around this point. You run into a problem where you need to play around with it, and getting what looks like the right time alignment may not give you the quite perfect phase alignment, getting what looks like perfect phase alignment may not give you the most perfect amplitude response integration that you're looking for. So I look at these as three levers I need to play with, and REW allows you to look at all of them. The alignment tool is primarily going to be focused, as mentioned, on uh, affecting delay and level, and then you look at the phase alignment and frequency response to get that as optimized as possible. There's another delay-related feature that you can use in REW that isn't part of the alignment tool, and that is after you've done all that and you've gotten it as close as you can, you'll take a measurement of the whole system. I recommend from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz just because I think it's easiest to see what's going on. Um, and then you would look at the spectrum and look at a wavelet. By looking at the wavelet, and you don't need it to be, in fact, you don't want it to be particularly fine-grained. So I, I'd have to look again at what my mine is set up. I think it's one six octave. Excuse me. But you'll want to look at the wavelet, and then there's a peak energy curve that shows up. And the peak energy curve is not necessarily, especially if you've got a lot of reflections in the room, it's not going to necessarily be what you would see with a perfect direct curve, where you would have like a straight line. I mean, if it was perfect, it'd literally be a straight line all the way down, meaning the sound the peak in the energy happens at the zero point and it never varies. Any bandwidth limited system is going to have a rising peak energy because of group delay at lower frequencies. So what typically happens is it goes down and then it starts to kind of curve out. And then as you get lower and lower in frequency towards the end of the bandwidth, it goes out farther and farther, right? With the uh, room mode, you're going to see little zigzags in it where the modes are. Any reflection could cause that. So you got to ignore those because those are not what you're interested in. And instead, you're going to want to look at right around the crossover point. And when you, when you look at that peak energy curve, it's going to jut out. Now, if it smoothly juts out and then kind of continues on and goes out, there's a nice smooth transition into this change in time, and then it goes out again because of the bandwidth issue. I call that well time aligned. Everything's integrated well. And often when you get that just right, the frequency response good, looks good, the phase response looks good, and you're time aligned. If it's not well time aligned, what happens is it goes down, and then it juts out, and then it comes down again, and then it goes out. That's not a time-aligned system. That's a problem. So if it's like 10 milliseconds, it may not be the end of the world, but you could probably play with it and get it right. Because 10 milliseconds at a typical crossover point of around 80 to 100 hertz is roughly one cycle, and that's not the end of the world. But what if it's 20 milliseconds or 30 milliseconds, or I've even seen 100 milliseconds? Well, that's not time-aligned, and you can get perfect phase integration at 100 milliseconds off. So you could be 10 cycles off and still have perfect uh, phase integration. So... Changing uh, time changes phase. And in most of these processors, when you're changing the phase, that actually is what you're doing to a point, uh, if not completely. 
So what I recommend is you start with getting the delays right, because that's the first thing you want to do. After you've gotten the delay right with the phase zeroed out, and everything looks good from a time alignment standpoint, if you still have some obvious phase issues and some obvious frequency response issues, because remember, you're not going to hear these phase anomalies. You're going to hear amplitude anomalies. So if the frequency response already looks really good at that integration point, you may not want to touch this. But let's just say for the sake of argument, you've gotten the time alignment, which is the delay, set right, and everything integrates really well in that area. And the phase looks pretty good, but it's a little bit off because that happens sometimes. You could play around with the phase control a little bit and see what that does. But my guess is that as you play with it, you're going to find that the time alignment is no longer correct. And so probably that's not going to be the best route. In fact, typically what we do when we have access to really sophisticated DSP tools is we adjust the delay until the whole thing is as aligned as it can be. And then what we do to get that little phase problem fixed is we actually add all pass filters and use that to adjust it because the all pass filter will affect the phase, but it will not affect the time delay and it will not affect the frequency response at all. But because it, here's where it does affect the frequency response, because the phase alignment can cause some cancellation or reinforcements that we don't want. Um, sometimes you do, usually if, if you need to do this, you will actually get a better frequency response by doing that. So my focus actually would be on delay. That is what you should be focused on, not phase, because the two are tied together. And you don't want to necessarily be adjusting the phase without the delay, because you need the system to be time aligned. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, thank you for the $20 donation. I know this is probably going to spur comments that I need to do a video on how to do proper subwoofer integration. And you're right, I probably do need to do that. Um, so thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for the donations and I'll keep more videos coming.